Hi, I'm Matt Tolentino. Uh, you may have seen me on the website just uh, last week, I think, um, talking about at least one of these projects. Uh, I am an assistant professor of computer engineering in the Institute of Technology, and uh, I'm here to talk, actually take you on a roller coaster ride, quite frankly. Uh, five minutes. Unbelievable. OK, so I'm going to try to go over four of my projects in five minutes. Please bear with me, all right? Um, just really quickly about me. Um, by the way, I don't like to make you read. I'm going to give you a bunch of pictures to look at. Um, um, I'm a non-traditional academic, so I've been to a whole bunch of places. I've worked in funny-shaped buildings. Um, uh, I've worked with startups. I've worked. Uh, I worked for Intel for 15 years before I came here. So I'm really an industry person that came back to academia to do cool stuff like I'm going to tell you about now. Um, oh yeah, and I am actually a graduate. I was a first graduate, uh, or f one of the first uh, in the uh, graduate program that came out of the Institute of Technology um, here at UW Tacoma. Okay, you guys ready? All right, my background is actually in computer architecture. That's why I spent uh, almost two decades at Intel. Um, so I used to design high-end server computer systems, um, all the way from the CPU up to uh, large-scale platforms, all the way to supercomputers at uh, some of our national labs. However, when I came here, I changed a little bit. I went from use, working on these really huge supercomputers to now these really, really small computers that can fit, you know, in some cases, in your wallet. Okay, so, and part of the, the reason for that was, was the drive towards what we call the fourth industrial revolution, basically integrating these kinds of things into your daily lives, right, to help you as well as to promote things like public safety. So what, where my, my aspect or where my research focuses on is sort of the intersection of these things of, the intersection of cyber physical systems as well as combining that with analytics and machine learning techniques to do cool things. I was doing some work here on uh, smart buildings and I talked to the city. And they said, you know what, you need to talk to the fire and, and police department. So I went down and had a conversation with the fire chief here in Tacoma. And, and we went through a couple of things. And I said, tell me about some of your problems. And he said, you know what my biggest problem is? He said, I've got all kinds of cool technology on trucks. I can see where everybody is driving through the city. If they're, if they're at McDonald's, I can see it. He said, but as soon as they walk into a burning building, I'm back in the 1800s. So I said, I think we can do something about that. So I started this project focusing on, on how do we make smart firefighters. All right? Which is really a combination of, of a couple of different things. The Internet of Things, all these smart devices we're embedding in our systems, potentially augmented reality so that we can actually deliver content directly to people's eyes, and, and robotics. Right? We want to be able to use robotics in dangerous environments so that we don't have to send people in there. So the project I have going right now is, is actually a fairly complex project, the most complicated one I've done. The, 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 one of the key aspects of this is actually doing an indoor positioning system. So we can give that incident commander outside the building insight into where the firefighters are. Now, if somebody gets hurt or somebody, they're, they're rescuing a victim and maybe the whole thing collapses around them, they can find their way out, right? They can also know a bit more about what the environmental conditions are within that building. Maybe there's a route they shouldn't take because it's too hot. Maybe there are dangerous chemicals that are burning, right? So we can, we can, uh, we can provide this kind of insight by actually instrumenting um, the firefighters themselves. They also don't necessarily know what the floor plan of that building is. So we can actually track, and as they drop these little, what we call these little beacons, we can discover floor plans dynamically while we're responding to the buildings and be able to you know, then identify different paths out. So what this is actually showing is how this system works where we embed these devices on individual firefighters as they're responding to these different events. We have a whole bunch of, of other aspects to this I'm not going to have time to talk about, um, but we actually integrate um, voice interactivity. You know, think of Alexa, but now on yourself, right? So that, so that they don't have to start doing weird things like gesture control. They clearly can't swipe a screen, right? So we have to integrate voice control. Just to give you a sense of, of the complexity, this is the entire system from sort of a software point of view, right? So we have a lot of different analytics that we've baked into, into our back-end uh, server platform. We've been developing custom devices to affix to the individual firefighters. And then we've been rendering displays both on, on mobile tablets as well as actually doing some, some initial displays inside the mass of firefighters. Um, to say that, okay, it's, it's one thing to put up a foil and say, oh, here's this cool stuff we're doing. Uh, but to show you that this is actually real, these are some of the initial devices we've developed. We've completely designed uh, all, our, all our boards custom um, and, and <clears throat> sent these out for manufacturing to, uh, uh, to be able to embed on the firefighters. Um, where's the future? You know I want to build Jarvis. 
you know? So, so the future really is being able to do this. And, and while you might think, okay, it's, it's Hollywood, no, 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 this is actually real. Um, we've been able to do this in some initial prototypes. If you saw the website, you saw I do a bunch of stuff with drones. I'm not gonna have a lot of time to talk about that, but that was also with the firefighting department, where we're actually trying to track hazardous plumes as they're occurring. So, you know, you can use a computational fluid dynamic model to understand how that plume is moving, but that doesn't tell the firefighters or the responders on the scene what's happening. I also have a project going on with the School of Education here at UW Tacoma, um, where we're, um, we're taking you know, a traditional Alexa type of pipeline, we're embedding that into individual devices, and we're incorporating those into what we're calling smart bookmarks. What we're actually trying to do here is address an early education problem of, of uh, specifically the achievement gap. So this is actually with uh, Professor uh, Marcy Stein over in the School of Education. Finally, if you're doing all this cool stuff with cyber-physical systems, what's the next step? Robotics, right? Why send in a firefighter when we could potentially send in a device, right? What I, call it, what I like to call this is software-defined robotics. So you remember that scene in Matrix when she can't fly a helicopter, but she downloads it, right? Why can't we do it with the devices now? Guess what? We can. And we're doing it right now. So what I call this is, is software-defined robotics. I have a lot of my computer engineering students actually developing robotic systems now. And, but those robotic systems can be repurposed for other things. And so, and so what we're doing is, is actually capturing those capabilities, those personalities, so that we can download them to uh, different types of devices. Quick acknowledgments, some of my work is funded by the National Science Foundation from a recent grant I got. Um, this isn't everybody in my lab, but, but a, few, uh, a, few, a few of them, <laughs> the ones I have pictures for. So uh, uh, I do have a website for the lab, I call it IPA, um, the Intelligent Platforms and Architecture Lab. Um, it's down right now, but, but it'll be back up soon. <laughs> Thanks.